you look at the other part of it. When you design NKN, what you need to understand is that expansion is going to be imminent because they'll mange more, you know, that will come into action. Let me also have it, let my locality have it, let my constitution have, constituency have it, you know, all those things will come. Reach is also going to be important. Speed is going to be doubly important because technology will not stay put. You design for 10 and then stay there for 10 years, you are finished. You have to have a process in place. You cannot put a solution in place in such large networks. And it has to be a common backbone because it has an inherent ability to share. Today we don't talk about a single network design, but we talk about a network infrastructure which can have software-defined networks running on the top of it. The whole game is getting redefined in research today. So we have to be adept to that. And when there are telecom service providers, what is your additional role, while you add, et cetera, the real thing that is happening is quality of service and security that comes along. If you have a national lab like Baba Atomic Research Center, and the same, you have another university, both are independent, both are autonomously controlled, people will be worried about what is the security space that I have on the top of it, will somebody see what I'm doing, et cetera. You have to do, carefully handle that. If you run even a simple classroom on National Knowledge Network, you cannot have disruption in a classroom because the student's attention goes away. The learning, uh, the whole joy of learning goes away. So the quality of service becomes important. You have to have one entity which owns all the infrastructure which will do it. That is NKN. Otherwise, the links are actually belonging to BSNL, Power Grid, and Railtel. It's just a collective effort of Government of India and a closed user group of these institutions, which is solving the problem. It's like cooking for yourself at home. That's the kind of philosophy it has. The efficiency of the individual organization does not affect you at all, because the redundancy that is built into the system makes sure the reliability availability gets automatically addressed. So the rel highly reliable, highly available network, which can give you quality of service which is guaranteed, and which can ensure security across the stakeholders is the key for NKN. This is a simplified picture of NKN. Actually, each line that you see there is a multiple of uh, six lines or eight lines, as the case may be. If I put all of them, it won't look nice. So we removed all that and put a bigger line there. So that's the kind of, the color scheme essentially says the different people who supply those lines. The second one. The NKN starts from the institutions and then stops at the districts. The NOFN starts at the blocks and goes up to panchayats, the fiber structure. But then the NOFN is also an architecture with an inherent technology built into it. And what it does is to take whatever NKN has or NKN-like structures have from any space to rural space. I'm sorry about this slide. I hope you are able to read it at that place. By definition, NKN should provide an ability for people to use it and create their own networks. That's the primary idea. Because there's no point in everybody spending time and energy reaching every village. So you reach as a government, like a big road that you lay, and then everybody is able to drive their vehicles on it. You know, that's the kind of model that it has. And then if you look at customers, their governments, Telecom service providers, if they want to extend the reach for their own services, internet service providers, and digital service providers, which are a new breed now, actually. These telecom and internet service providers are merging in some sense, and perhaps mobile will become a digital service provider in course of time. You know, all these readjustments will happen over a course of time, and you will see only digital service on your yeah, cyberspace. There'll be nothing else somebody will be providing you the guaranteed cyberspace, a portion of it which is called yours, as a virtual network running on the top of it. That's what the new software-defined regime says. It will have a lot of services that you're used to. You, we call things like, you know, we want links, we want bandwidth, we want MPLS clouds, we want networks to networks and multiple nodes and so on. All these will be part of it. What does it do? It takes a business or a government service to, from metro to panchayat, semi-urban to panchayat, and panchayat to panchayat, you know, across, laterally also. Focuses only on the reach. It doesn't do the end service, it focuses only on the reach, so the infrastructure becomes available. Why is it being done? Why is it done, being done with fiber and higher speeds and so on? This is a very popular thing that is there in um, 
PhD comics, world has changed. Previously, if something comes on your PC, you will be very happy. Today, even if it downloads at megabit speed, you are unhappy because that's what you are downloading. That's the effect of change. User perception, user requirement has changed. You cannot go back and then say you don't need it. Well, 4 KB voice will deliver voice quality call, and then you speak to somebody, that is enough. Don't do anything else. You cannot say it. They will do whatever. It is a media which will be enabled. And everybody will use the media that is natural, which is going to be iconic and video. And the second picture will hold. So what is an asset in the context of uh, NOFN? It's a dark fiber. It's a lambda that is lit. It's an alien lambda if you want to launch one as a person creating a virtual on the top of it. Or it can simply be a bandwidth. It depends on how you perceive it. Your requirement of establishing an infrastructure, a portion of the infrastructure, as yours for providing a certain digital service, will be reflected in NOFN. Going forward, in steady state, it will help you reaching out with the own to fiber, with the versatile network management systems, including the billing system, because you have to make a complete business out of it. Because all services require peer-to-peer -peer interaction at the end of it. Whether you have a cloud, you have a network, etc. the communication in the whole world, whether you like it or not, is half duplex. Both of us cannot talk simultaneously. It's called a noise. Either I talk or you talk. There is no full duplex communication in the world. In the human world, there's only half duplex communication. Full duplex is a misnomer we use only in electrical engineering and communication. It happens to look like full duplex. Conversation and human understanding is half duplex. So the fundamental assumption is that somebody will go from panchayats to villages to the citizens using Either the fiber, ideal candidate, with the G-Pan type of technology, and then wireless, 2G, 3G, LTE, the 4G, 5G, whatever that you have to. Now, these are the things that people are going to do, because you have a stable infrastructure and you want to take it to the people. The last mile must be owned by the service provider. So if you look at two scenarios of how government will use it, how the business will use it, there are methods of putting it together. That's what this shows. I'm using NICNET as the government and the rest of it as the, the blue ones. So how business will connect? You can have a public sector unit going to the panchayat and you have all these individual units making their own establishment and going to the panchayats. So the whole architecture essentially says, do whatever at the lower levels, bring it all together up to an IP layer where life is usual, as usual, where telecom industry, the IP industry, the internet industry understands the whole thing. And then you have architecture and topology which has enough variations built in so that you can build your own personalized NYFN part of yours as a network. And of course, it can be an all-way fiber, normal fiber, and so on. You know, these are the things which are being put in place as technology. What next? These are terrestrial means of reaching out. People don't have time to wait. He says, no, 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 that will come up much later. Let me leapfrog and do something. It's not leapfrogging. Let me use an alternate technology from the sky. What is MHRD doing is that there is an approved program by the cabinet as a part of NMEICT program, National Mission on Education through ICT, which envisage is creating 1,000 direct-to-home channels. 1,000 channel means two satellites up in the sky. It's a lot of effort uh, to put in there. And to use it is much bigger effort. Now, first of all, we need to create uh, teaching ends. Now, the NKN has given the impression that things can be digitized and shared. After two years of establishment of initial NKN, people are starting to talk about uh, you know, sharing electives, creating new programs creating programs where teaching faculty is not wholly available within their own university system. They borrow from other places. The fragmented faculty that is available on a particular subject are brought together. Internationally, they are borrowed. You know, those things are being done. Now, for this to be scaled up and to be, you know, teaching the regional space itself, one has to do it 
uh, effectively. That's another thing that they are doing. So 1,000 channels are required for that purpose. So th the reason why you look at DTH is that normal TV set will receive it. But the reason you have to be more careful about design is that when content is generated, it can go through any means and get delivered on any device. So that also has to be kept in mind. So we are doing a pilot with 50 DTH channels, which I think is the largest than the largest to private space that is available in terms of number of channels as of today. And that, po po you know, that program is on. It meets the social objectives in a very significant way. One of them is right to education and equal equality, equity in access and excellence. I would like to tell this crowd about the investments that government has made. The NKN is about 1.2 billion US, NYFN is 4 billion US, and DTH is about 1.5 billion US, which is uh, significant in terms of what is being done there. And services, as I mentioned above, the needs are becoming services here. The investments are getting translated into ESDM opportunities and indigenization opportunities. Now, if you look at DTH, set-up box is the answer. And set-up box, when you talk about, you're talking about you know, multiple numbers in the, of the order of millions and billions and so on. That, is, uh, that creates market. You do a chip design and then a manufacturing ecosystem, subsystem design, a manufacturing ecosystem, a total system design and a manufacturing ecosystem. Partiality is available, it has to be augmented. India is in the tipping point and the change is happening. Once you do that, there has to be standards and certification. It has, become, it has to become a part of the whole process in the industry. And what you have to do is to address the Indian needs in terms of languages. And what you have to do is to provide iconic interfaces. You know, these are not normal. You have to provide iconic interface, as people understand. And you have to look at technologies of the future as well in terms of sensors, because they're going to play a huge role in agriculture and health, and that's a huge market. So you need to have Blue Sky Research initiated now, which will lead to industry academia interaction in a significant way at a very high level. And of course, when you do all the safety and security of these embedded systems and their design has to be borne in mind from bottom up, otherwise you can't retrofit security to your system. So what we are actually doing is let's build India, where risk is a lifestyle, bonding across initiatives is natural, locally relevant technologies and globally competitive technologies so that you have scale of operation. Set a process in place, don't put a solution in place, don't say I have this solution, buy it, tender it, and so on. You emphasize rediscovery periodically because it leads to sustainability if you rediscover the technology yourself, the solution yourself. Don't ask for the market. Fulfill needs of fellow brethren, automatically market will be there. Dare to dream, dare to invent. Explore the entire electromagnetic spectrum. There's enough that is left untouched. And any small signal, which a very nano volt that is available, can be handled by the electronics very, very nicely, significantly with the resolution that is required, accuracy that is required. So sensitivity, specificity will not be an issue in the coming years. So that's the story about NKN, NOFN, and DTH, and the opportunity it offers to India. Thank you very much.